Hey, Foley here bringing you the third episode of the semi-extreme one chunk series. To recap the last episode, I flinched some muggers in order to get a mind and air rune to cast wind strike. Proceeded to roll a couple of free chunks, one that included the goat of all combat training methods, sand crabs, and then getting a chunk with the task of getting 70 mining in order to mine an adamant ore and a tier 7 shooting star, of which I was able to complete all as well. Ending off off the episode with a new chunk roll, the Outer Fortis Farms, where we start today's episode. But before we get started, I just want to say thank you for the support throughout these past few weeks. The channel has now hit 3,000 subscribers, and I have a lofty goal of hitting 5,000 by the end of the year. So if you are enjoying the content, check to make sure if you are subscribed and to like the video, it really does go a long way. Also, shout out to my channel members listed here on screen who got to watch this video a few days early. If that's something you're interested in, click the join button below or click the link in the description of the video. And one last thing, thank you for watching. Let's get started. We ended the last episode with these stats and a total level of 336, rolling the Outer Fortis Farms as my new chunk, giving me 7 tasks to complete. Our skilling tasks are 67 cooking to make a tuna and corn, burn a log, 41 fletching to cut pearl bolt tips, 26 range to wield iron bolts, and 40 thieving to pickpocket a guard. There are also two best in slot items to obtain as well, being the bronze med helm and the iron dagger. Now that we've gone over the task, let's explore what new stuff is in this chunk. First, there is the Shrine of Rallos. This is the first altar I have unlocked and will allow me to regain my prayer stats anytime I want. This can come in handy for an account like this where I don't have access to prayer potions. There is also another Quetzal landing site that I won't be able to use for a while, as well as our first general store. This general store brings new items that I didn't have access to before, like the chisel, knife, tinderbox, and bowl that I will be using to complete tasks in this chunk, and possibly a couple more that I could use in the future. Also, this is the first place that I will be able to sell items at in case that I need GP for whatever reason it may be. There are also guards, muggers, and thieves in this chunk. Thieves and muggers being the ones that drop the bronze med helm and the guards being the one that drops the iron dagger and the iron bolts. There are also four log spawns here which is what triggered the fire making and fletching task. And the last thing to mention is the wheat field. All wheat fields can have a crop circle spawn inside of them, letting you enter pure Hero, a place where all the implants roam from players and bots, mostly bots, to catch them as much as their heart or chunk task desires. This requires you to have level 17 hunter, the level that which you can catch the lowest tier impling, the baby impling. The only way I can get hunter levels at the moment is through lamps from random events, so it will take a while before Piro Piro is in my grasp. Now recently there has been a lot of talk revolving around Piro Piro and how people approach it. To each their own they say, and with that, Here's how I will be doing it. I will be taking on Piro Piro until I get the level to catch the highest tier implant, but with one caveat, I won't be taking anything I get there. I have been debating on keeping clues, but I want that to be something you all decide. So I will be holding a poll to see if I keep the clues or not. A link to it will be in the pinned comment of this video. Recently, Josh isn't gaming or Chunky Neil, as you may know him, released a video saying he wasn't doing the Piro Piro grind and his reason why, in which I totally understand his reason. Having pretty much all your best in slot items from there, plus the massive amount of supplies that you wouldn't have the opportunity to get otherwise nullifies a lot of progress that you made in your chunks prior to Piro Piro. So in short, I will get the 89 Hunter once I have Piro Piro unlocked and not keep anything. But Overworld Implings are still free game and will not count towards chunk task. All Overworld Implings that I catch will be found by myself and I will not be catching any that are scouted by others. I feel like this is a happy medium to both sides of the coin. But alright, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and complete some task. Let's get started. We'll buy a chisel and a knife for now. Oh, the tinderbox. Oh, we got a little doggy. Who's a good little doggy? Look at you. Look at you, buddy. Yeah, you're just the best, aren't you? So, unfortunately, there is no axe, so I can't just woodcut for all these logs. I'm going to have to keep picking up these logs for the fletching goal. So, I'm just going to have to world hop and... We can use a knife on them and probably make some longbows and sell them to the general store. I don't have the level for that right now, so I'll have to do arrow shafts until then. Okay, I might as well get the easy task out of the way. Burn a log. 
There we go. Task complete. I believe the fishing shop over in this chunk over here has feathers. So maybe I can make arrow shafts and then make headless arrows out of that. That might be very beneficial for me considering I might need to make a lot of arrows in the future. I'm going to head over there and see how much feathers cost. I'll pretty much spend my whole cash stock on feathers, I think. But I don't think I'll have enough money to actually get to the level requirement for this chunk. They are 200 coins a feather feather pack. All right, I bought 8,000 feathers. I left myself a couple thousand GP just in case I need it in the future. Yep, so here's the strat. We pick up all three logs and then we hop to a different world. Yep, so we pretty much do this until we get a full inventory and then we can fletch. And there we go, the first fletching level of the grind at level two. All right, so I have made all the arrow shafts to match the amount of arrows that I have. So I'm going to make all the logs that I get now into long bows. And while I go walk to the logs and pick them up, and while I'm waiting for logs to spawn, I am going to be making these headless arrows. So we'll be getting XP the whole time up until I'm out of feathers, of course. And then once I have a full inventory of long bows, I'm going to make a walk over to the general store and sell them and then just repeat the process. Hey Lily, look at the look at the stream. Oh my god! Yes! Can you find can you kill a guard and give it his bones? <laughs> huh? Beat him up, Fole. Show him who's daddy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, best this is the best in slot. No, it, it really is. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> First kill, best in slot. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Damn. Hey, you get an iron chain body, you'll be a black knight. <laughs> Uh, there you go, buddy. Yeah, that's crazy. One kill count. Been better if it was an iron helmet, though. Because I could be an iron man. Alright, I'll just go fuck myself, I guess. All right, I have about 30,000 GP from all the longbows that I've been selling to the general store, so I'm just going to go ahead and buy more feather packs to make some headless arrows. I think that would be uh, a good idea just to speed up the fletching just a little more because just cutting the longbows uh, is actually pretty bad XP per hour, but if I put it in tandem with making the headless arrows, it's actually pretty decent XP and can get me these last couple levels that I need pretty fast. It left myself about about 6,000 gold and we ended up getting a little over 12,000 feathers which I think will be enough for the rest of this grind. And a level 40 fletching, just one more fletching level to go. And we sit here right by the good boy right here as we get our level 41 fletching. We still have a little bit of arrow shafts to make into headless arrows, but that is fine. We are now able to fletch the pearl bolt tips. These drop from the sand crabs at a rate of 1 in 128. I'm not going to go kill them right now. Right now, I want to go ahead and get the thieving up to level 40. That way I can pickpocket these guards. But for thieving, I believe we are going to do the same as we did before. I'm going to pickpocket the regular farmers, mainly using the sweet corn as food because I still have a cooking goal for level 67, I believe, to make a tuna and and corn 67 cooking is the requirement for that so definitely a lot of corn to be made and there is the first oh he despawned oh my god and there is the first level of the thieving grand level 39 it actually took less than 30 minutes uh I'm actually kind of impressed. We're getting 8.8k XP per hour. That is also including the cooking that we are doing, so we can get more if we don't cook. That's actually going uh, by pretty fast. It shouldn't take, but, you know, probably another 
30 or 40 minutes to get this next level. But yeah, I like to wait around for the farmer to get in between these stalks of corn. That way I can trap them and just go AFK on them. He can stay there for up to, I believe, 10 minutes before he will despawn because he can't move. But it's a nice little 10 minutes of thieving without having to run around chasing them. And just like that, there is a level 40. We got both those levels in less than an hour. We're at 49 minutes for this login session. So yeah, our success rate on them farmers have went up significantly, obviously. But we can go ahead and pickpocket this level 21 guard. First try, thank you very much. Task complete, and we get rewarded with a Sergeant Damien. Camo bottoms. We got ourselves a new pair of pants. Would you look at that? So I got to now kill these guards to get that iron dagger. A one in 21, so it shouldn't be that hard. Oh, I can flinch them. Oh man, this is going to be easy. I may not even need to flinch them, but I really don't want to go back and get food. So I'm just going to flinch them for now. Oh. Well, um, there's the iron dagger. <laughs> uh, kill count number two. Ooh, we got ourselves the iron dagger, our best in slot magic weapon. Believe it or not, daggers do give a magic bonus. So that is uh, something you may have not known because uh, I did not know that until now either, which is very interesting. So it looks like we have three tasks left, one of them being the 67 cooking to make a tuna and corn. The other is cutting the pearl bolt tips, which I already had the fletching level for. I just need to get the drop. And then we need to get 26 range to wield iron bolts that we can get from guards at a drop rate of 1 in 12.8. So I will have to go back to guards at some point to get those. But um, I'm glad we did get the iron dagger while we were still there. I believe the only way I can train ranged right now is through these iron knives. They spawn two at a time right here in the Hunter's Guild. So you know what this means? World Hopper Simulator. Let's go. In 125 world humps later, well, 126 now, we now have ourselves 252 iron knives. We're going to take these straight to the sand crabs and do a little training. We'll see how far we get. I'm hoping for at least level 20. And maybe by the time we are done using these iron knives, we will have the oyster pearl that we need for our fletching goal. There we go. Level 2 ranged. That's the oyster I need. Do I need to use a chisel on this oyster to get the pearl? I believe that's the case. All right, we have a single knife left and we are at level 22 range. So I'm going to have to get a few more knives. I think 100 will do, but I'm going to go ahead and get 150 just to be on the safe side. I just need to put a chisel on the oyster pearl and yep, I can make pearl bolt tips. There we go. Chunk task complete. We get three fletching XP per oyster pearl. So that is uh, that is not great, but it is a chunk task complete. There we go. But time for everyone's favorite part of the episode, World Hopping Simulator. We got to record the last couple of levels, but here we are at level 26 range. We can go ahead and knock that level requirement off. We just have to get the iron bolts uh, from the guards real quick, and then we can have that task be complete. And there is the iron bolts. We like to see that. Looks like we got it at kill count number 15. So uh, not too shabby. Just a little over the drop rate, but not complaining. And wielding iron bolts. That is a chunk task complete. And I believe the last thing that I have to do is get 67 cooking. So off to the corn field I go. All right, so for this whole level, I've been doing this method of cooking where I drop all my corn on the floor besides one and then I cook and it 
makes it to where cooking is a two tick action instead i believe it's four that is regular so it is speeding up the process considerably there is level 65 cooking by the way it makes uh cooking go by faster i was getting like around fifty thousand experience per hour just by afk cooking but doing it this way i'm getting um over 75,000 cooking XP per hour, so I think putting in the extra clicks is definitely worth it. If we keep up like this, we'll be uh, level 67 in no time, probably just like one or two more hours. Alright, and this should be the final of the corn that I need to cook. It's been a good session today. I have did all the cooking from level 58 to 67, and just this one day we've gotten... 306,000 cooking XP. Corn is just a really good training method, especially for a chunk man. Like, it, it's definitely OP. And there we go. Level 67 cooking. Uh, we can now make the tuna and corn. So I just need to go over to this fishing shop right here and buy me a tuna and then we can combine those together and complete the chunk task and complete the chunk as a whole all right how much does the tuna cost it cost 40 coins likely we have 100 oh we cooked the tuna okay and then i'm guessing we just use them no nothing interesting happens um how do we do this oh i i, I probably should have looked this up beforehand but we need a knife a bowl and then we can go ahead and make that so i have a knife in the bank and then i can get a bowl from the that general store that i was selling all the long bows to so let's go ahead and do that all right we should be able to just buy this bowl and then i use sweet corn and we have a tuna and corn but that is the chunk task complete. We now have tuna and corn. I just looked it up and they heal 13 hit points. So I believe this is my best food source for now. So if we get something that we need a lot of food for, then this might be the option to go for. But let's go ahead and roll a chunk. The only new chunks that I can roll now, looks like we have number 10 that we can roll which i believe is a thieving grind yes yeah, still from a gym stall and then we'll have a, a couple other grinds as well number eight brings us a rune weapon that we can wield so i'm not sure if we have to get that from a shop or kill an enemy for it but a rune weapon would be pretty nice and number nine it looks like we'll have a wood cutting requirement we have to chop a teak log but there is a hardwood tree patch over there too so um, i would really like to get nine before i get one that way i have another source of farming xp for when i have the 82 farming chunk task unlocked but other than that, I don't think there is really anything else. Let's just go ahead and pick a chunk and uh, see where we end up. Sunset Coast. Okay. Sunset Coast, I mentioned it before, but it has access to a charter ship, so I can actually get off Varlamore if I roll it. This can take me anywhere from Karamja, Karend, to Port Cazard, which I don't I don't want it to be Port Cazard, but it could. Port Serum. I mean, it could take me literally so many places. Catherby. So that would be interesting to see where i end up if i do end up landing somewhere the charter ship can take me looking at the task before we go explore the chunk for skill task i have to wear adamant armor which i already have the defense level for 15 fire making to burn an oak log and 15 wood cutting to chop an oak log so it looks like this new chunk gives us access to an axe for best in slot task i have to obtain an adamant full helm being my best in slot melee helm an oak shield being my best in slot shield overall and an adamant med helm being my best in slot ranged helm pretty easy task let's go explore the area and then we'll get to completing all the tasks and here we are at the brand new chunk we have a fly fishing rod spawn a small fishing net spawn a sand pit then we have the charter crew trade members so there is a bunch of stuff that we can get in here that can be very useful for us in the future if we get a crafting grind we have buckets of sand we have seaweed glass blowing pipe very huge up here we have a shopkeep which gives us a bronze pickaxe the bronze axe i'm gonna go ahead and buy because i need it pretty much all things that we already had access to besides the axe a iron bar spawn Ooh, 
an anvil right next to it but we need level 15 smithing to do anything with iron bars so that is kind of useless for us right now but it is nice to know that it is there we also have lurid i believe that's how you say it looks like they sell medium helms and full helms this is where we're going to get our adamant full helm and our adamant medium helm and i believe i had that money in the bank i just had to go and grab it looks like it's going to cost about seven thousand gold for both of them so that's not too bad we have a clay oven it probably cooks clay i would assume going on upstairs it looks like we have ooh, we have a bread spawn okay so i'm gonna go ahead and plug in all these to the chunk picker that way next time i roll i don't forget to do it these are all the charter ships that i can go to at the moment we have catherby port sam musa point brimhaven port Cazard, and corsair cove all right i plugged them in so we now have six new rollable chunks but this should be a fairly a quick chunk for me the only real goal is to get the 15 fire making and the 15 wood cutting so i got myself the bronze axe and the tinder box for that and then we also have the knife to make that oak shield whenever we get the 15 wood cutting i'm just gonna sit here by the bank and chop some wood and then uh, make some fires oh my god i didn't even notice look at these capybaras oh my god they're so cute and there is a level two wood cutting And there is level 15 fire making. We can now burn oak logs once we get the wood cutting level for it. And level 15 wood cutting just like that. Let's go over and find an oak tree. Then we can complete all three tasks. And then all we'll have to do is buy our best in slot range and melee helms. All right, I found an oak tree. And there we go, chop an oak log complete. Let's go ahead and burn this one and then we'll chop a few more to make the oak shield. And there we go, burn an oak log complete as well. All right, we got three oak logs, we only needed two, but here we go, making the oak shield. Complete, we now have a best in slot shield. Now let's go over to the docks and buy ourselves the adamant full helm and the adamant med helm. All right, Thurid, what do you got for me? There we go. We'll buy this adamant med helm. Task complete. An adamant full helm. Another task complete. And that is the chunk done as soon as I wield both of them. An adamant helm upgrade uh, can actually be pretty big right now. It's going to give a lot more defensive stats than uh, the bronze med helm I was working with. So... Uh, any and all upgrades are very much appreciated. But with that being said, the chunk is done and let's go roll a new one. Colossal worm remains and it is a nothing chunk. Okay, I'm going to go over there, see what it's got, and then we'll roll a new chunk. All right, it looks like we um, have unlocked more sand crabs uh there's this cool little looking place right here it looks like a huge like i don't know dragon or some type of skeleton over here let's see what's inside this little like um hole over here you know even though this place doesn't have anything for us to do this might be the coolest chunk that i've unlocked i mean this aesthetic of like the skeletal remains of this like dragon is uh pretty darn cool i really like that but we do have a bucket spawn a plank spawn which could become useful for for whenever we unlock a way to brain construction what we got two planks that can spawn so that that would be pretty nice but it doesn't look like we have anything else here besides the planks we'll go ahead and pick those up and we can roll the next chunk all right we're back to it um let's see what chunk number 15 has for us if anything it looks like chunk number 15 will not have anything for us so we can go ahead and roll into our brand new chunk The Camatorum Entrance. Let's see what we got here. It looks like we don't have anything, so I think we actually do have to start the Perilous Moons quest to be able to get in there. So I can go over there and check it out, and we can roll a new chunk all right so it looks like we have this agility shortcut that we could take but we don't have the agility or a means to 
train agility, but when we do, we'll have to get, oh, it looks like level 47 would be the requirement for it. So I believe we already had access to the Tekyu Salamanders, but we have access to all the traps for the Tekyu Salamanders now, which uh, is pretty good. This is a, another Quetzal landing site, and this is Camp Torum the entrance at least yeah even if i talk to him and nothing's really going on here is there yeah okay it says i do not meet the requirements for it but that is okay looks like we have a master stash unit as well not gonna fill that one up anytime soon yeah that looks like that is the the whole chunk nothing yeah nothing really useful for it at least for now yeah let's go ahead and roll a new chunk all right we got two new rollable chunks we have number 15 the river varla fork which is uh a long bone grind actually so we got three chunks that we can roll that will give us a long bone grind so that is uh that is something ain't it and then we have number 16 rollo's rise this is gonna give us a task to cut diamond bolt tips and to cut diamond so it looks like we're gonna have a crafting method do here and we'll also have to offer some blessed bone shards which is prayer so uh, prayer is a very important for this account, so I would uh, not mind getting that chunk at all. But let's go ahead and see what we get. Port Serum Church. Okay, this is Karamja. All right, we are officially off of Varlamore. I can go over there and check it out, but it says that we don't have nothing. If we had access over here to Port Serum, then we would have a whole new type of grind, the smithing cape being in this chunk. That is, uh, since I rolled um, over to Karamja, I can't roll another charter ship to Karamja. So the Brimhaven charter ship is no longer an option. But yes, I can still roll over to the mainland once. And then all other charter ships are locked unless I get to them via the actual land itself. So let's uh let's go take a trip over to Brimhaven, see what we got, and uh, it looks like we're gonna be rolling another. Let's see what we got for ourselves. All right, we are here at the charter ship. We can officially make our way to Musa Point and take our first steps off of Varlamore since we've gotten here. It's gonna cost three thousand coins to get to musa point oh wait i'm not even fucking <laughs> i thought i deafened myself uh, that's funny <laughs> all right well i'll be back <laughs> yeah yeah oh my god so i need more money if i'm gonna get back here Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab um, a couple hundred more GP. That way, I can at least get back here if I have to come back here. I mean, I don't think there's anything in the chunk, but I just want to visit the chunk once before I uh, before I roll a new chunk. If that makes sense. All right, we now have six thousand, so we can get back here just in case we need to get back here. Um, let's go ahead and charter to our new chunk, Musa Point. Here we are. Oh, I forgot to unlock the chunk um, in the plugin. Hold up, uh, eleven eight two five. There we go. We are now not blacked out but what do we have here in musa point looks like we have this other bow we have a man that we can attack and pickpocket which uh, isn't really going to give us anything okay so this guy can take us to port serum or ardoin so that is uh, not useful for us but it looks like that's everything in the chunk um other things that we can do and well we can't do right now but if we do end up getting port serum uh then we would have the smithing cape right here so that is a uh, that is a potential future chunk task and we also have access to asgarnia dungeon um which has skeletal wyverns hobgoblins ice warriors and giants pirates and muggers we won't have the slayer level for the skeletal wyverns for a long time though i have a feeling so yeah let's just go ahead and roll our new chunk and see if we get something that actually gives us something to do all right the new chunk that we can roll is number 15 right here this is the chunk where we'll have to get the sharks and all of that good stuff. But yep, uh, cooking, wood cutting, fishing, fletching, fire making, all that good stuff um, in the grind right there. So let's go ahead and see what we get. 
as Garnia Ice Dungeon. Oh, okay. This is Port Serum. This is Port Serum. Um, but luckily at the moment, I can't access there because we only have access to this part of like just the docks in Port Serum. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna travel over there because it's literally just the docks. There's gonna be nothing there, so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and roll a new chunk and see what we get. But we can officially take off all the other charter ships from being rollable now because I have access to the main island. So that leaves us with 12 rollable chunks. Um, what do you think we will get? Hopefully something with something to do. River Varla Fork. Okay, so we have River Varla. This is going to be a mossy giant grind it looks like but we'll talk more about the new chunk in the next episode huge shout out to all my channel members listed here on screen it really does mean the most and if you liked the video make sure you are subscribed and that you click the like button it really does help out a lot the goal for 5,000 subscribers at the end of the year is only possible with you all and with that Thank you for watching. My name is Foley, and I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.